Hey there, my fellow intellectuals, how are you doing today? Today, I'm going to be telling you another story, and that is going to be my experience with the physics GRE. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with graduate school news as of late, you may have missed the fact that there are a lot of physics and astronomy programs that are uh, starting to drop their physics GRE and even general GRE scores as a requirement for their applicants. And my own school, the University of California, Irvine, has, at least the physics department, has no longer required the applicants to have a physics GRE score. And I think they're even working towards a general GRE score as well. There's been a lot of talk in graduate school since I've been here that um, on the importance of these tests and whether or not they're useful or not, and whether or not they predict success for graduate students in the long term in terms of getting their PhD. But I just wanted to talk about my story and my experience with the physics GRE and how I think it affected me. And as a spoiler, I'm going to say it wasn't positive. And so I'm going to be trying to convey what was going on in my life at the time when I took it and sort of why I'm sort of okay with the fact that these scores are not going to be required anymore. So let's go back. I had to take the GRE, the physics GRE back in the fall of 2016. That's when I was applying to graduate school. And I had two chances to take it. I had I could take it on um, in September and I could take it in October. My plan was to take it in take it both times essentially, and see how I did in September. And then when I see how I did and see where my weaknesses were, I was going to study again uh, more intently and or intensely, I should say, and uh, try and improve my score for the October exam. But life had other plans for me at the time. Now, that summer, I was actually doing an internship uh, with NASA, and so I didn't have a lot of time to put in any sort of studying for the physics GRE. Uh, there were some study groups that wanted to be formed, but if I'm being honest, we just ended up bonding over our NASA research and just with each other and just had a really fun time on the weekends as opposed to studying. I'm just going to be honest. That's, we just had a fun time. We, we liked going to the beach and whatnot. Um, which was a nice relaxation time away from our, our research that summer. Um, but I did end up going to a physics GRE boot camp in August after my internship was done. So I, I did that. I went to UC Davis and they had a boot camp there that would sort of prep us for uh, the physics GRE. So I went to that boot camp and I realized that I was you know, fairly unprepared to take this physics GRE in September, but I got some materials. I bought this book known as Conquering the Physics GRE, which is a very popular physics GRE study book. I highly recommend it if you do have to still take it. But nonetheless, I got that book and I tried to study for the next couple of weeks. And I was getting ready to take the exam in mid-September, but then I had a tragedy in my family. My grandfather passed away um, after just years of illness and it deeply affected me. It was not an easy time in my life. I was very close to my grandfather, and I actually lived with my grandparents growing up for a number of years. So, you know, I, I saw him as a father figure growing up. And so to lose him at that point in my life was just absolutely devastating. And I, I really could have cared less. Um, well, I couldn't have cared less, I should have said, about the physics GRE at that point, because his funeral actually ended up being on the September physics GRE date. I remember that much because I had to cancel the exam um, that I had signed up to do in September because his funeral was that day and I was going to be a pallbearer at the funeral. So there was absolutely no way I was going to miss his funeral for a, for a test. So that was more important than a test to me. And so I had to try my best to go into the October exam um, you know, to, this is my one shot, essentially. I only had one shot now to take the physics jury. I had no idea um, what my strengths and weaknesses were or would have been because I couldn't take the September exam. And so I was just emotionally just distraught, right? Like losing someone who's really close to you um, takes a toll on you, right? And the next couple of weeks were rough for me emotionally and mentally. Um, it was It was not a fun time in my life. Let's just put it that way. And studying for the physics jury and also the general jury on top of that and trying to somehow think about school in the midst of all this um, was just just um, not doable, really. 
I mean, I did my best. I did try to study. I did try to, you know, push the sad thoughts aside and focus on the physics theory uh, preparation. But in all honesty, I, I, it was fruitless. And I took the exam and I didn't do great. I don't think that was too big of a surprise. But I felt that I actually did a little bit better than I than I was worried I would do. I thought I would like fall below the, like the 25th percentile and I didn't. But it, that, the score I ended up getting, which I won't say, wasn't too much better than that. So um, you can, you, you can uh, judge for yourself what I got. But essentially, you know, what I didn't like about the physics year review is that for one thing, it's 180 questions in 100 minutes. So you have about less than two minutes per question to, to do. And it just, it's totally against how I learned how to do physics. You know, when you learn how to do physics, you learn how to write out all the steps, you know, you write out all the knowns, unknowns, you write down all the equations you think you might use, and then you sort of methodically go through the problem and try and solve it. Physics theory is not like that at all. It's just, you got to sort of bang out calculations like that. You have to just, you know, use dimensional analysis um, to, to sort of eliminate wrong answers. It's really more of test taking strategy as opposed to really knowing physics. I mean, in some way it's sort of knowing physics test taking strategy, but at the same time, it just, it just didn't feel like it was a good measure of what I knew of physics at the time as a senior in undergrad. And I really felt that if I had, you know, the optimal situation for me, as in, I didn't have to deal with sort of the emotional trauma at the time. I didn't have to, um, you know, balance a tough course load my senior year and trying to do research and trying to study at the same time. I really felt like I could have, you know, put in the effort and gotten a better score overall, but you know, that just wasn't possible. And so, you know, I feel like it, it really doesn't do a good job of conveying your physics knowledge because it really, it really just tries to, you know, throw all these physics subjects at you and see how you deal with them. And you know, you've been studying physics for three years at that point, possibly, maybe maybe more, maybe less. But I want to find a person who feels like that test actually, you know, covers the way, you know, covers how physics is meant to be done. I don't think there's any there's anyone out there who really thinks that's really how physics should be done or was taught how physics is done. I'd be surprised if there were. Um, but it definitely wasn't for me. And so... That's why I feel like these tests are, they're just so, um, how, how, what's the word I want to use? They're just so like fortune based as in like, are you having a good day that day or not? Are you, did you get enough sleep the night before or not? Did you have a good breakfast that day or not? It's just so contingent on all these external factors that you may not necessarily have control over. And I necessarily, and I definitely didn't have control over uh, the things that I was going through at the time. And so I did not feel like it tested me fairly on what I knew about physics at the time. And so that's sort of my experience with the physics theory. I ended up getting into graduate school after all. So, I mean, no harm, no foul, I guess, with my you know, mediocre score. But I do think that there needs to be a different way to somehow assess the body of physics knowledge you've accumulated over your three or four or five years of physics undergrad. I'm not trying to propose any solution because I honestly, I can't think of any, but I know that there are studies out there that suggest that physics GRE scores and general GRE scores aren't really good predictors of PhD completion anyway. And that's sort of the most important thing when going to a graduate program, you, you want to complete the PhD and you have to do research. And also I don't think, you know, physics GRE scores necessarily correlate to being a good researcher in that regard. So that's my story. I know I kind of went on there, but that was my experience with the physics theory. Wasn't great, didn't have a fun time, and didn't feel like it really did a good job of measuring my physics intelligence in undergrad. But like I said, I got into graduate school. I'm here now. I'm a PhD candidate in physics now, so it's it's irrelevant at this point. But if um, you know, if you guys have a similar experience, I'd love to hear in the comments below. Uh, what your experience was with the physics GRE. And if you do have to still take the physics GRE, um, I will put the link in the description to the Conquering the Physics GRE textbook that I would recommend. It was really helpful. I, I would have gone through it more if I could at the time. But um, yeah, that's my story with it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you um, will reflect upon physics GREs and GRE scores in general and make your own uh, decision and conclusion about them. But thanks for listening to me. And I hope you guys will have a wonderful day. 
Take it easy, everyone.